Li Xiangjing, entitled It is hard for us to meet, harder still to part. The east wind can't halt the flowers decay. The spring silkworm spins till death ends his thread. The candle drips tears till its wick is ash. At the morning mirror, she grieves that her hair will grey. Reciting poems at night, she feels moonlight's chill. Peng Mountain, home of immortals, is not far away. May a bluebird tell her how I long to see her. So we continue with Li Shangying's poems and his untitled poems, which seem to constitute a significant proportion of his preserved corpus. And uh, now, compared to other Li Shangjing poems, I believe this one is pretty straightforward. And the topic is also a pretty recurrent one among Li Shangjing poems. It's love. It's an uh, unsatisfactory, um, obstacled, blocked, unfulfilled love. So the, the background of the poem seems to be some sort of a liaison or love affair between the poetic persona of Li Shangjing and a woman. And we don't know too many details about uh, the relationship except that communication between the lovers is difficult. Now this difficulty, it's not explicitly stated what, what, what the difficulty is. They, they're probably close geographically or maybe not. Maybe one of them is going to part. But uh, anyway, it, it falls into that sort of, of, of topic, the sufferings of lovers who have to be kept apart, which is a pretty conventional topic in Chinese poetry, uh, sometimes used allegorically. And then some persons, some critics have interpreted this poem allegorically. Uh, since the Chu Tzu, the, 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 the songs of the South, and even earlier, you know, from the Han Dynasty interpretations of the Book of Odes, there was this idea that poems of love of, of, of a man longing for a woman or vice versa, could be read metaphorically as, um, as literary uh, facades, as literary um, make-believe and pretense of, of an underlying uh, political topic, which is uh, the minister hoping for the emperor's uh, appraisal and appreciation and, and, and uh, service, and well, being put in service of the emperor. Uh, and some critics, as I said, believe that this is a poem written by Li Shangjing to a, an important minister to try to ingratiate his favor. But mm, that, feels, that feels a bit too convoluted. And anyway, whatever the original intentions of Li Shangjing might have been, this poem reads pretty straightforwardly. It's just a typical uh, lament of uh, uh, a man loving a woman and being loved perhaps in return, but not being able to, to be with, with his beloved. And the poem have some images that we will comment in a minute, but it's pretty straightforward with its imagery and with its content. So let's take a look at usual, as usual, the poem couplet by couplet. So first couplet. It is hard for us to meet, harder still to part. The east wind can't halt, the flowers decay. So the poem starts with an image of difficulties. Hard, probably, uh, I don't have an, an English version here, but I wouldn't be surprised if hard was reduplicated, as was so typical in the tetrasyllabic poem of the Odes, perhaps the poem saying hard, hard. Uh, the hardness here seems to point in two directions. It's hard to meet, but when we finally manage to meet, or the few times we do meet, it's very hard for us to part because we love each other a lot, or, or because we fear we are aware of the difficulty of our next meeting. Or maybe it's hard of us to part because one of them is going away to somewhere else. So this, this remains mm, evocative and ambiguous, as, as is pretty typical of the condensed uh, and evocative nature of classical Chinese poetry. It says, the east wind can't hold the flowers decay. Uh, this image puts us clearly in spring, so that seems to be the seasonal setting of the poem. And remember, spring is always loaded in Chinese poetry with connotations of love, of getting together. Mm, it's, it's the time for love, and here it it contrasts or it jars because this time for love seems to be frustrated. The wind, the east wind, which is the wind of spring, can't halt the flowers decay. So uh, the spring wind can't stop flowers from falling and decaying. And you could perhaps take this as, as a metaphor. So perhaps the poet is painting himself as the wind who is unable to stop uh, the woman's, the beloved's passage of time and aging, which is an obstacle or will become an important obstacle to their love relationship. 
Second couplet, this is the first of the parallelistic ones, and it, it has two images again. One of them is a spring one, the other not necessarily. There are two images of objects uh, that reflect um, suffering or some sort of pain. The spring silkworm spins till death ends his thread. The candle drips tears till its wick is ash. So both are images of consumption of disappearance. So we have a candle, and the candle is dripping tears. So this is well, evidently a personification. It means the candle is melting, and the wax, the, the wax drops flowing down feel like tears. And it's, uh, I think, you know, it's a red candle. So they're, they're like tears of blood, which is a conventional Chinese motif for you know, tears of intense pain. So the candle is dripping. Yeah, until it's consumed. Is the poet the candle? Is he being consumed by his unfulfilled passion? And the spring silkworm spins till death ends his thread. So, you know, the, the, this is a, a seasonal image and silkworms are associated with women. It spins its thread until it dies. And, and you know, they're killed to get the silk out of them. That is, when the cocoons have been made, they're put into boiling water to kill uh, the, the the silk worm and then the the, the silk cocoon is um, unwrapped or, or you know spun into thread. So both images of of two objects that are destroyed that are consumed and that meet with death and that keep laboring that keep suffering or feeling until reaching death or or pain or consumption or disappearance. Third couplet, so as usual, generally the first two couplets, the first half of a regulated poem is generally more generic, more abstract, more unspecific, and uh, the second part usually becomes more subjective, and this is also the case here. Uh, not that the first part was cold or distant, but, but, but the, the second one becomes more focalized, you could say, because the, um, the third couplet, which is the second parallelistic couplet, moves on from objects that stand in for the poet and his beloved, to the beloved herself, who becomes the centerpiece of the third couplet. How the poet imagines her suffering from the separation. At the morning mirror, she grieves that her hair will grey. Reciting poems at night, she feels moonlight's chill. What is my beloved doing from morning till night? So the poet imagines her um, and the, the images that are painted are very evocative of the traditional mm, period of disunion poetry, uh, the, the, the courtly style, the kung ti shi, also the jung shi, the, the objects poetry. And uh, it was very typical of this poetry to paint the beloved or a loved woman, generally an imperial concubine, in a luxurious setting, but sad. So it's a uh, tristesse, uh, the jaded concubine, the abandoned beauty, who is longing in luxurious pal palatial contexts, but all the, mm, the gold and silver and pearls and, and cloth and perfume, all of that mm, contrasts with the suffering beauty who feels forlorn and abandoned. And, you know, this also connects with uh, the wakefulness at night topic, unable to sleep because of, 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 of different passions in the heart that stop uh, nightly rest. So the poet is imagining his beloved, and uh, two images, or two ideas basically come in. First, the beloved is getting older. This was already introduced in the first half of the poem, the problem with aging. The east wind can't halt, the flowers decay. And the spring silkworm spins till death ends his thread. So looking at herself in the mirror, alone, uh, the woman is grieving because she's getting older. She's not getting any younger, and the older she gets, uh, the lesser will be the time that the lovers might be able to enjoy together. Yeah? So she's looking in the mirror, anxiously gazing to see for any white, grey hairs appearing in her head and heralding uh, old age and, and death. And at night she recites, and she feels moonlight's chill. So she's wake, awake at night, unable to sleep because of love, and uh, reciting poetry and feeling the cold. In this case, it's the cold of the moonlight. Um, it's night cold. And, you know, it's the coldness of loneliness as well. 
and uh, lots of Chinese poems on love include not only Chinese also Japanese include uh, the, 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 the protagonist looking at the moon and feeling sad finally the last couplet concludes and uh, generally the last couplet works as a summary and intensification of what the rest of the poem has been dealing with but in this case the last couplet is infused with um, references with literary references which you know, make it a bit dark and a bit artificial. You know, I, I, I don't actually feel them as a mm, very intense mm, uh, conclusion for the poem. But anyway, Peng Mountain, home of immortals, is not far away. May a bluebird tell her how I long to see her. So the poem ends with these mythological images. Peng Mountain, we've already encountered it before. I think also in a poem by Li Shangjing. And uh, Peng Mountain was you know, one of the islands of the immortals, Peng Lai in the Eastern Sea. It was associated with a love story of separation, Emperor Han Wudi and concubine Li. So this favorite concubine of the emperor died, and uh, he mobilized sorcerers to bring her soul back, or at least a shadow of her soul, so that he could see her again and consort with her. So it says, Peng Mountain, the home of the immortals, is not far away. Why is the land of the immortals not far away? Maybe because in the last line he's going to fetch an item from, a messenger from that land? May a bluebird tell her how I long to see her. Now the bluebird is also an image of mythology. It was the bluebirds that are mentioned here were the messengers of the Shiwangmu, the queen mother of the West. And uh, she was also the, the, the presider of a, a Western paradise equivalent to Peng Lai in the East. And she could grant immortality. And uh, her stories in Chinese mythology are also intertwined with romances and love affairs with emperors and poems about the, the, the frustration of separation with them. So uh, with these dense mythological references to immortal figures of, of separation and pain, the poem you know, probably is just being you know, polishing uh, and, and rehearsing again the feelings that have been explained all through the poem. That is, we're sad, uh, we're separated, um, we are close and yet far apart. I wish I could send a messenger to you to, to let you know how I feel about you. But, but, but this straightforward message is clothed, you could say prettified or, or obscured, with these two mythological um, juxtapositions. Yeah? Instead of a messenger, the bluebird of the Queen Mother of the West. And uh, being close to the land of the immortals, probably being close to you, in, where, where you might reside in your palace or in your, 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 your living place. So altogether, not a bad poem. Uh, I think it's a pretty typical poem by Li Shangjing. I think the, the image of the candle stripping tears is a pretty famous one. I think it's one that is frequently referred to when, when the poetry of Li Shangjing is referred. Uh, a good example of this personification of, uh, of suffering. Um, I read a translation by another poet, of, sorry, by a, a scholar critic, um, James J. Y. Liu. Translation is pretty similar. He puts the emphasis in his commentary on the fact that there are many um, uh, elements that are lost in translation, especially uh, evocations that of some of the words which have um, homophones uh, with double or, or triple meanings, and also which connect with the erotic poetry of Tsuye, the Tsuye songs that were so popular in the period of this union. But yeah, altogether quite a nice uh, poem, and it represents very well this sort of uh, poetry of uh, separated lovers, which, uh, as I said, comes from the Sixth Dynasty, but will also flourish in the next period after the Tang, in the period of the Song Dynasty, in the new poetic genre of the Tsu.